I don't think I'm going to be saying something really outrageous by pointing out that interactivity is a key feature of media today. In fact, interactivity is pretty much everywhere. And as far as we know, interactivity is a good thing. Everybody loves the fact that we can interact with media today. So on the web, for instance, we see it in all of the participatory media, the web 2.0 sites, um, that actually not just encourage interactivity, but demand interactivity. If you think about YouTube, without you and your videos, it's kind of television or it's nothing. So we've even got broadcast television getting in the act. It's constantly asking us to vote, to tweet this, to upload that, to um, uh, vote on this, to join this group. And that's basically asking us to interact with media in ways that we haven't done before. <laughs> Excuse me, I've got a cold. Um, and this has been represented in popular and um, uh, academic texts as being a moment of power. We're all suddenly supposedly empowered by the ability to interact with media. This ability to click and vote and what have you has been represented as power at last. Thank God Almighty with power at last. So um, the audiences of uh, media today are no longer considered to be these passive victims sitting there goggle-eyed waiting to be kind of you know, uh, bombarded with the symbolic violence of, uh, of old, big, uh, nasty media. We're not actually being lured by those eerie voices of the cathode ray tube into false consciousness and false desire anymore. We are now finally able to seize the power that has once been held by um, a big media. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, so nowadays we're interactive. We are not just sit there passively. We're totally active in how we engage with our media. We're tweeting this and we're tweaking that and we're typing in our innermost selves into our status updates on Facebook and we're twiddling that joystick and we're twitching our thumbs and we're absolutely constantly interacting. And all of this is supposedly empowering. So this is why Time declared 2008 Person of the Year to be you and the fact that we now control the information age. Apparently that's the way life is today. I think that's bollocks. Personally, I think interactivity is a little bit evil and that's kind of the point I want to make today. <laughs> and God bless the person who put that on the internet. Love them for it. Um, <laughs> so my argument is that interactivity has a relationship with kind of dominant hegemonic uh, uh, neoliberalism. And what it does is every time you see one of those empty text boxes, it's asking you to make a choice. It's addressing you as a person who makes individual choices, who presents themselves, chooses who they are, and expresses that in public media. It's actually constantly constructing you as a person of individual choices. <coughs> Excuse me again. But what it's also doing at the same time, all of those sites that ask you to do that, they don't actually care what it is you say. They don't tell you what you can say. They don't control what you can say. I mean, YouTube doesn't actually tell you an awful lot about what you can't do on its sites. And um, the emblematic of this really is um, coming up on the next slide. Geez, 15 seconds. Is, is Google, the white screen of Google, the big empty white screen of Google that just allows you to search for whatever is in your head. It's saying, I am not controlling anything that you might be wanting to do. I am Google, I am lovely, and you are totally in control and you have the power. So my space on uh, uh, the internet is a place where I am considered autonomous and I am self-choosing and I am free. All of my choices are free from control, free of, of, of any kind of intervention. And to my mind, that is the exact person who is the ideal neoliberal citizen. So neoliberalism as an ideology, there are two factors to it. One is that uh, it's not valid, uh, that individuals are free uh, and that there's no right for anyone to control what they do and how they think and how they engage with the world. So in neoliberalism, that control has been replaced by markets. So what neoliberalism does is also address us as choosing individuals, people whose key res responsibility, whose key role and function is to make individual choices for themselves without any intervention from anyone else. Um, they're represented as consumers of options rather than citizens with responsibilities to others. <laughs> Man, this is getting hard. Um, <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> so, um, to my mind, that's the same kind of person who's being addressed by all those beautifully, supposedly benign text boxes of interactive media, all those points where we're being asked to become choosing individual consumers of free, with free choices. <laughs> and so back in the 80s, Paul Willis talked about how the education system was encouraging working class kids, encouraging orientations in working class kids to become working class workers. I'm asking, what are we learning from interactivity? What orientations is interactivity ingraining in us? So I'd like to finish by saying I don't actually think interactivity is evil. I just like to use that title. Um, I think it's a little bit dastardly, though, and I think we need to really be questioning um, the kind of power that we actually think interactivity is uh, affording to us these days. Thank you very much.